Hi and a very good evening to all of you. Welcome back to our session of daily current affairs. I hope your preparation for RBI grade B exam is going up to the mark. And just in case you think that you need any more guidance, uh, you want to streamline your preparation and reduce your chances of errors in the actual examination, you can still check out our RBI grade B crash course. The time is running short, but you still have time to manage your preparation. In case you need any guidance, do check it out and download our app, download the Anuj Jindal app from Google Play Store to access all the study materials and everything that you need for your uh, preparation uh, in one single app. All right, so let's begin with the very first question of the day. The very first question is in regards with a uh, CubeSat that was launched by a UK based satellite launcher. The name of the CubeSat is LakshaySat 1U CubeSat. It is a type of a nano satellite. What is a nano satellite? All the satellites that weigh less than 10 kg are classified as nano satellites. These can be small sats, these can be CubeSats, and also with the name of nano satellite itself. All right, so just remember in case if it is asked in the exam, jitti bhi satellites hai, all satellites weighing less than 10 kg, less than 10 kg are your nano satellites and one of them is CubeSat. Usually CubeSat ka weight does not exceed more than 2 kg. Alright, so a CubeSat was recently launched not by ISRO but a UK based space launcher. The question is asking you who has developed the satellite. The correct answer here is Ms. Kurupati Sai Divya. Ms. Kurupati Sai Divya was the develop, is the developer of this CubeSat that was launched by uh, B2, B2S Space Limited uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, she belongs to Guntur district of Andhra Pradesh. This is a sample, this is a sample picture of a CubeSat. CubeSat ka usually size kitta vary karta, it starts with 1U. 1U basically means 10 into 10 into 10 centimeter. It can be expanded to 1.5 to uh, 10 U to even 12 U tak iska size vary karta hai, but isse zyada nahi. Always remember 2 kg se zyada cube sat ka weigh, ex weight exceed nahi karta. And usually all the nano satellites, usually all, all of them weigh less than 10 kg. So this was it about it. Utility kya hai cube sats ki? Bhati cost effective and efficient solution hai to carry out space research projects, right? Chitte bhi space research projects hai, investigative platform hai, new technology and missions hai. CubeSat is mein bahut zyada helpful hota hai and ISRO ne bhi 2021, in September 2021, ISRO launched its CubeSat with the name of InspireSat. Inspire Sat ke naam se ISRO ne bhi September 2021 ka CubeSat launch kiya tha. Is Inspire stands for International Satellite Program in Research and Education. It was launched in September 2021. And on a side note, it is important to note that you are Rao Satellite Center. You are Rao Satellite Center is the key satellite center by ISRO. It is the key satellite center that develops all the satellites. Jitte bhi innovations hai, jitte bhi nai satellites hai, you are all, we all know about Satish Dhawan Space Center and all the space launchers, but this is one that we rarely come across. So I thought to let you know, you are our satellite center is one of the key and leading institutes under the ISRO that is responsible for development of satellites. All right. So this was it for the question. Moving on to the next question, we have how much assistance has been approved by World Bank to India under mission Karma Yogi? Karma Yogi mission kya? It is a capacity building program for all the officers, all the people working under the Indian civil services. Karma Yogi program is also linked with the Ministry of Human Resource Development. We will discuss more about it, but first answer the question. World Bank has collaborated with India to develop or to train officers under Mission Karma Yogi and a certain amount has been granted as assistance, financial assistance. So, what amount kya hai wo aap se question pucha ja raha hai. The correct answer here is C, that is 47 million dollars have been uh, 
granted by the World Bank to assist the government of India implement and train officers, build their capacity under Mission Karmiyo. And under what uh, context, in what context has this assistance been forwarded to our country? It is we have a partnership, India country partnership framework, a partnership framework here between the government of India and the World Bank group. This key focus areas are resource efficient growth. There's no need to note down, but for a broader perspective, just know about it. Resource efficient growth, enhancing competitiveness, enhancing job creation and investing in human capital. These four are some of the key initiatives and sources of the uh, World Bank Group and India Country Partnership Framework. So basically in three, in four sources ke through World Bank wants to address what? Climate change, gender gaps and challenges and opportunities by high impact technology. Isi may already included ho jata hai, civil service and bureaucracy ki capacity building ko improve karna to make the bureaucracy more flexible to changes, to changes with the new technologies, to uh, you know make them more aware of challenges like climate change, gender gaps, all these in sub context may train karne ka aim bhi hai, uh, mission karmi yogi. So because these two missions have the common broader objective, uh, the World Bank has extended $47 million loan to implement or to support uh, India's mission Karmiyo. A very important uh, platform that you should know you should know about is the iGOT platform that is Integrated Government Online Training Platform. Integrated Government Online Training Platform which is also known as the iGOT platform. It is, it is actually a part of Mission Karmi Yogi and it also it is also a part of Deeksha portal under the Ministry of Human Resource and Development. iGOT basically implement kiske through hota? It is implemented through the Deeksha portal. So this iGOT platform actually integrates all of the best global practices to train civil services on one single platform, but also on an built on an Indian ethos. So this is what it was about. I hope the concept and everything, the background was clear. The duration or the maturity of this loan uh, from IBRD is for 11 years, the grace period of 4.5 years. Moving on to the next question. When was the International Research Conference on Insolvency and Bankruptcy organized? International Research Conference on not when but where. Where was this conference organized? The conference was organized in IIM Ahmedabad's uh, Financial Market Studies ka ek bhati renowned center hai in IIM Ahmedabad jaha pe International Research Conference on Insolvency and Bankruptcy were organized. It was attended by major uh, Major players from the banking industry, of course, the RBI, the Ministry of Finance, and all these stalwarts. But let's know more. Let's uh, know a little more about uh, the conference. Conference me key issues kya kya discuss hue the. First issue that first major issue that was discussed in this conference was cross border insolvency. Cross border insolvency means. Cross-border insolvency implies that India is extending its insolvency services uh, to uh, nations, to different nations. It will be a landmark shift in the financial relation in India's business and economic relations with the rest of the world. Another important issue uh, that was discussed over here was the need for a data-driven, need for a data-driven and research-based policy initiatives, regulatory and policy jo initiatives hote hai, uh, by the insolvency and bankruptcy board, they should be data driven and research uh, driven. So comprehensive IT platform, there is also under development a comprehensive IT platform where all the codes, all the codes, processes and procedures that are 
involved in an insolvency proce uh, process that will be there on that uh, platform you know for other stakeholders to be aware of everything all right so this is what it was about insolvency bank uh, board of india insolvency and bankruptcy board of india you all know it was constituted in the year 2016 the members include representatives from the rbi the ministry of finance and currently it is being headed by mr rk mittal uh, sorry mr ravi mittal so basic objective kya hai insolvency ibbi it regulates all the proceedings all the insolvency proceedings ko wo regulate karta hai and also it is a regulatory of all the insolvency professional agencies and all the insolvency professionals that are working in our this was it about it let's move on quickly move on to the next question we have which state has signed an mou with french organizations afd and onf for exchanging expertise and sharing knowledge in the field of wildlife protection and management afd and onf both are organizations of the french government only jaise hamare india mein ministries hoti hain waisi france ki government mein onf is actually a department of forest french government's official department of forest and afd is a financing institution as you can guess from the name agency franchises the development basically a development institution that finances other countries jaise japan ka jika ho gaya ya fir official development assistance jo dusri countries ko grant karta hai isi tarah french ka afd bhi ek institute hai so the state government of assam signed long back in 2012 afd ke sath partnership kiya tha state government of assam ne that led to improvement in uh, population of rhinoceros in the country over all these years <clears throat> it it created more than 21000 hectares of plantation in the state of assam new nurseries were developed and local communities ke jo skill improvement mein you know forest resources ko kaise utilize kiya jata hai all the skill that are necessary for the local community to preserve forest to economize on the forest resources they were also important imparted with the afd partnership and now with the partnership this third organization onfi has also been involved and now it is a tripartite mou okay so assam ke five important national parks of assam let's name it kaziranga national park you all know manas national park dibru saikhova national park nameri national park and orang national these are five most important national parks in assam and assam ek aisa state hai jisme 35% of the land is forested area kaziranga national park mein we already come across the problems of overpopulation of rhinoceros and all those things but anyway those are of course of course uske management ke liye bhi training diya jayega you should also know that the new skills that have been acquired by the local communities with partnerships like these so assam ki jo local community hai they market their forest products their uh, tribal products under the name of bana shrishti bana shrishti like bana shrishti ke name se ye forest products ko market kiya jata hai as the name suggest ban means forest shrishti means nature right so bana shrishti is forested uh, sorry is uh, marketed uh, is a brand name for all the local community uh, developed forest products and they are marketed through the official portal of ban bazar ban bazar ko taj group of institute sponsor karte hain so this is a very very beautiful example of how public private and the government agencies can come together empower the local communities help them build upon their skills economize the forests and also this also engages and encourages them to preserve the forest resource so ye kuch important one liners hain maybe they can be asked in exams but because we are covering so you should know about it Moving on to the next question we have where is India's first green field grain based ethanol production plant located yesterday only we discussed about methanol economy why is methanol more 
uh, economically more efficient for a country like India? Why is methanol production more efficient for India? Now we have to study about ethanol blended program. Ethanol blended uh, roadmap for ethanol economy, you all already know about it. Roadmap nikala the government of India ne till the date 2025. For the initial year, the target was E10. E10 ka target diya tha for April 2022 and of that we have achieved 8.5 level of 8.5% 8, 8 of ethanol blending which is still good right not that bad yes it does fall back uh, fall behind 1.5% but I think that can be covered up over time and till 2025 till from 2023 to 2025 target kya rahega? E20. E20 yani ki 20% ethanol. But first, let's just answer the question. First, greenfield grain based ethanol production plant kaha pe located hai? You have options Ari, Araria, Bhagalpur, Jehanabad, Madhubani, and Purnia. Let's have a look at the correct answer. The correct answer here is Purnia in Bihar, India ka pehla greenfield grain based ethanol production plant has been set up in Purnia in Bihar. Methanol ka jo uh, pilot testing hua hai in Assam that is being done in Tinsukia district just for a revision, short revision. The plant will use sugarcane, maize and rice for ethanol production. So of course, abhi hamara jo ethanol production ka capacity hai, it is only biofuel based. Uh, yes, there, are, there is research going on in ethanol fuel. That how can non-biofuel sources like algae can also be used for producing ethanol. But that is still at a development stage. This is the technology that we already have. And since we already have, we can harness this. Iske aur advantages kya ho jate hai? There are sometimes buffer stock collect hota rehta hai. The food gets wasted. Uh, it does not get sold off. You know, the commitments does not get fulfilled. There is a loss in remuneration of the farmer. So this can be a very, very good uh, use. <laughs> all the buffer and extra stock that are lying with the FCI, all the buffer and unsold, unsold stock that are there with the farmers, they can be put to good use to produce ethanol. And it also ensures a good remuneration to the farmer. So yes, there are advantages. Hai. This is India's first green, base, green field based plant. Green field means it has been started and developed from the scratch. So you all know about the national policy on biofuels. National policy on biofuels which was launched in the year 20, uh, 2018. So ethanol production ka capacity, is it still limited to E20? No, it has been expanded to up to 85% and even to up to 100% of ethanol blending. So basically, flex fuel vehicles have been introduced by the government of India. Of course, on a pilot basis, flex fuel vehicles uh, uh, have been introduced in the city of Pune. Pune with flex fuel vehicles have been introduced that have the capacity to run on E100, that is 100% ethanol, ethanol based fuels. That is TVS Apache hai, two-wheeler company. TVS Apache is the name of the two-wheeler company that has launched flex fuel vehicles on a pilot basis in the city of Pune that run on E100, that is 100% ethanol blend. So I hope it was interesting to learn some important facts. Moving on to the next question. We have recently Indian Coast Guard ship named Kamla Devi, that is Yard 2118, is the fifth in a series of five fast petrol vehicles which was launched in Titagar area of West Bengal. Titagar area West Bengal, mein, Kolkata mein hi ek municipality hai Titagar. Wahi pe ye ship la launch hui hai ICGS Coast Guard. Kamla Devi has been, you know, the ship. Yard 2118 has been named after Kamla Devi ji. She, has, uh, she was a renowned uh, freedom fighter. She worked for the social and economic empowerment of local artisans and craftsmen. She also worked towards the betterment of women. 
and she has been recipient of awards like Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, as well as the Raymond Magsessy Award. Very, very important personality. And the ship has been developed by Garden Research Shipbuilders and Engineers, which is a Kolkata based 100% government owned shipbuilding unit. It is the first shipyard. It is the first shipyard that created or that developed 100 warships for the Indian Navy. So it is very, very important. But it has been, uh, it has been developed in partnership with TVL. TVL is called Titangar Wagons Limited, which manufactures rail coaches. Ko manufacture karta hai. So this is Yard 2118 ship. Hai, it has been launched in partnership with TVL. So this was all about it. Moving on to the next question. We have which IIT operates DIRV Shakti, DIRV Shakti processor? Which IIT operates? You have options. Madras, Bombay, Delhi, Ropar and Kharagpur. Let's have a look at the correct answer. So the correct answer here is IIT Bombay. IIT Bombay develops... Uh, sorry, there is some problem with the slide. IIT Madras, the correct answer here is IIT Madras DIRV Shakti processor is conducted by IIT Madras. So let's have a look, let's have a look, detailed look at what this uh, question basically is all about. So CDAC, CDAC is uh, signed an MOU for cooperation in the areas of telecom and information communication. It was developed in 1984. This information hai about CDAC, you can take a screenshot of it. Let's first understand what are semiconductors. We have already talked about semiconductors. Kya hota hai. Unka manufacturing, indigenous manufacturing, kitna significant hai in our Indian economy and how the import depends on, it dependence on semiconductors is going to uh, you know, increase many folds in years to come. So, usi se related kaafi sari government schemes hum logo ne kal hi apne slide mein dekha tha that Karnataka government has signed with an MOU with an Israeli company that will uh, set up and uh, set up a semiconductor fabrication plant in the, in, in the state of Karnataka worth 22,900 crore. So, ye usi ka ek part hai, usi conference mein ye MOU signed hua tha yesterday what we read about and the theme of the conference was catalyzing India's semiconductor ecosystem. India's consumption of semiconductor is expected to rise at 80 billion in 2026 and 110 billion in 2030. Hmm. These are some these are some MOUs that have been signed. This one we covered yesterday in our slide. Ye wala MOU hum log kali apni slide mein cover kar chuke hai. You can read about rest of the five MOUs. These are important from the exam point of view. Semiconductor manufacturing, indigenous semiconductor manufacturing is absolutely essential for uh, an Atma Nirbhar Bharat. And you all know that national policy of electronics ke under he a production link intensive in incentive scheme hai worth 76,000 crore for indigenous manufacture of semiconductor. So, semiconductor ke manufacturing ke liye just component ki zarurat hoti hai, uske, usko develop karne ke liye bhi government ne ye program launch kiya hai, microprocessor program, DIRV, microprocessor program has also been launched by the government of India to improve the production capacity and the capability of microprocessors in India. So aggressive milestone hai, commercial silicon uh, shakti, which IIT Madras operate karta hai, and also there is a silicon Vega, DIR Vega processor, which is also uh, meant for 4G and 5G broadband program. So you can have a look at it. Vega processors also, Bharat Electronics also operate the Vega processors. Maybe in some other class or slide, we will discuss what are Shakti and Vega process. You can 
She only take a screenshot of this. It is important from the exam point of view. Moving on to the next question. Moving on to the next question, how much geographical area of earth is covered by forests according to the state of world's forest 2022 report? State of world's forest 2022 report, kitna geographical area of earth, how much geographical area of uh, earth is covered by forests? So this report is actually published by a specialized agency of the United Nations headquartered at Geneva, which is the Food and Agriculture Organization. बहुत ही कम लोग इसको गेस कर पाते हैं कि स्टेट ऑफ फॉरेस्ट रिपोर्ट है तो फॉरेस्ट से रिलेटेड ही किसी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने इसको यू नो पब्लिश किया होगा बट द स्टेट ऑफ फॉरेस्ट रिपोर्ट ऑलवेज रिमेंबर एफ ए ओ एफ ए ओ पब्लिश द स्टेट ऑफ फॉरेस्ट रिपोर्ट एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड जियोग्राफिकल एरिया ऑफ द अर्थ इज कवर्ड बाय फॉरेस्ट लेट्स है लुक एट वॉट दिस इज ऑल अबाउट a uh, state of world's forest uh, report has been released by food and agriculture organization during the world forestry congress according to this report 420 million hectares of forests have been lost and approximately 10.4% of its total forest area has been lost especially due to deforestation uh, deforestation bahut sare reasons hain forest fires are also some causes deforestation par human habitation industrial development agriculture i think these are very general points you all know about it already there is nothing much all the points are self explanatory forest cover abhi 31% hai sorry the answer was not 40% 40% the correct answer was 31% the sahi answer is 31% is the total forested area of the world and according to the report according to the report it has been decreasing uh, especially the primary cause of uh, this decrease in uh, the total world forest is deforestation 10 million hectares of forest have been lost every year between in just these gap of just these 5 years so understand the gravity of this also 15% of the emerging infectious diseases of course its source are forests only and the world population will reach this much by 2050 and will lead to a rise in demand for food glasgow leaders declaration ek sign kiya gaya hai on forest and land use remember the name remember the name uh, glasgow leaders declaration on forest and La land use has been signed by more than 140 countries who have pledged 19 billion dollars to support restoration and sustainability of forest so according to the memorandum or the declaration three key objectives have been defined under the declaration one is to halt first objective of the declaration is to halt deforestation second objective is to restore degraded land and expand agroforestry degraded land ko restore karna uncd ka bhi one of the most important objective hai india has also committed to restore some 1 billion hectares of degraded land and also agroforestry is one of the viewed as one of the most sustainable and climate resilient a uh, way to secure uh, to ensure food security in a world where the soil fertility is decreasing where there is th prominent threat for of climate uh, extremities to agriculture so agroforestry is the way forward where human and the forest can coexist through the method of agroforestry where forests and agriculture both are combined the third and important uh objective of this uh, for, uh this glasgow leaders declaration is to sustain forest and build green value chain second you all know agroforestry is related hai second was to sustain uh forests and build green value chain green value 
right so moving on to the next question this was very very important moving on to the next question we have which of the following companies has launched pay as you drive insurance program pay as you drive insurance program is a very important insurance program that has been launched by hdfc ergo general insurance ये जॉइंट वेंचर है बिटवीन एच डी एफ सी बैंक एंड जर्मन इंश्योरेंस जॉइंट अर्गो इंश्योरेंस लिमिटेड एंड इट हैज लॉन्च दिस पे एज यू ड्राइव प्रोग्राम पे एज यू ड्राइव प्रोग्राम एम्स टू रिड्यूस द कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रीमियम्स टू द कस्टमर हाउ कस्टमर सिर्फ उतना ही प्रीमियम पे करेगा जितना उसने कार को यूज किया है so this is actually the aim of this program aur ye regulatory sandbox ke andar launch hua hai what is regulatory sandbox regulatory sandbox ek aisa tool hota hai jisme jo naye inventions ya fir aisi nayi schemes ya policies jo launch ki jati hai they are tested on a pilot basis on real customers they are tested on a pilot basis to uh, you know लीव सम स्कोप फॉर कोर्स करेक्शन कोई भी करेक्शन हो या फिर कुछ भी हो तो उसका स्कोप बचाने के लिए और इफ द स्कीम इज फेलिंग और नॉट वर्किंग फॉर सम रीजन लार्ज स्केल लॉसेस बेयर करने से ज्यादा अच्छा है स्मॉल स्केल लॉस पे हम लोग बेयर कर ले जस्ट बाई टेस्ट यूजिंग द टूल ऑफ रेगुलेटरी सैंडबॉक तो जितने भी नए फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट होते हैं या स्कीम्स होती हैं एक्चुअल मार्केट में लॉन्च होने से पहले दे आर ऑलवेज टेस्टेड ऑन अ पायलट ग्रुप एंड दैट इज व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय रेगुलेटरी सैंड बॉक्स एंड दिस इज हाउ द इंश्योरेंस विल ऑपरेट इट विल बी ऑफर्ड एक्सक्लूसिवली थ्रू मारुति सुजुकी इंश्योरेंस ब्रोकिंग प्राइवेट लिमिटेड एंड इट अलाउज द कस्टमर टू प्रे प्रीमियम बेस्ड ऑन द एक्चुअल यूजेज ऑफ द कार वेरी वेरी प्रैक्टिकल right now it is uh, launched only on a pilot basis moving on to the very last question of the day we have which of the following has won the unesco uh, guillermo uh, cano world press freedom prize 2022 yesterday uh, 3rd of may we all studied was the world press freedom day that was declared by the unga 3rd of may and in that context only this prize has been forwarded to belarusian association of journalists the unesco uh, world press freedom prize it is named in the honor of guillermo cano ijaza he was a colombian journalist he was assassinated in the uh, in front of his office in colombia so uh, on in his honor this uh, award has is being accorded annually to various uh, journal groups and magazines and this year for 2022 the award has been given to belarusian association of journalists so this was it for today i hope this session was insightful and useful to you all i hope you all are preparing well and also make sure to revise at the end of the day always make sure to revise everything that you have done for the day revision will complete your preparation and ensure sure sure short success in phase 1 of the exam thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next class take care and bye bye